All right, guys, let's talk about the Friday night prelim for the Gold Cup Race of Champions coming up here in two nights' time. The Gold Cup begins tomorrow. I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we've got, once again, 68 cars entered into the Gold Cup. Yesterday, we talked about all the drivers running on the Thursday night prelim. And I mentioned in that video that I, I believe, in my opinion, that Friday night is a little bit tougher when it comes to the competition. And uh, I'll try and prove that to you here during this video. So 34 cars will go Thursday and 34 more will go on Friday, you know, barring anybody else with a late entry, which I would not be shocked to see that at all. Imagine getting to 69 cars for the Gold Cup. That would be nice. We'll have to wait and see if that does happen. So we've got this broken down into three separate columns. We've got the former feature starters, uh, the former guys that have actually made the Gold Cup main event in the past. Uh, we've got guys that have made the prelim night feature before. And then we've got a long list of guys in green that have done neither of them. So it's either their first Gold Cup or they've ran before and never been able to make a prelim or the Gold Cup feature in the past. Um, and so this board looks a whole lot different than yesterday. Uh, yesterday, there was 15 guys here in blue. I can't remember how many there were in red, but it went all the way down to the bottom. And there was about six guys on the green side of things. And as you could tell, uh, there's a lot more guys in green and quite a few more in blue as well. So when it comes to the blue side of things, we've got Tim Kading at the top of the board here. Uh, he has finished second at the Gold Cup Race of Champions on two separate occasions, 2002 and in 2018 uh, were those two years when he ran second. He's also been very good on the prelim nights as well with a third place result on three separate occasions. Uh, Kading has not ran a race on the West Coast yet with High Limit Racing. His brother, Bud, ran that same car at the Kings Speedway and at the Tulare Thunderbolt Raceway. And at Kings, he was in the top 10 before getting into an incident with Justin Peck. So the car has shown speed here as of recent times. And Tim Kading uh, is very, very good at the Silver Dollar Speedway in the top five for most wins all time at that racetrack. So he will be fun to watch. Michael Ficino, a 22nd place finish at this race last year in 2023. That car, I think, is very fast. Unfortunately, they've had a lot of issues uh, as far as, uh, you know, like mechanical problems uh, over the first three nights of this West Coast swing. So hopefully they can get him figured out. He ran very well on his prelim night last year. I believe he was in the top five on the prelim night last year. And so Faceno is a guy that could be sneaky good uh, on Friday night. Justin Sanders is maybe the odds-on favorite behind Corey Day to win the entire thing, in my opinion. He finished second last year at the Gold Cup Race of Champions to Corey Day. He also finished second on his prelim night last year, and he's been red hot in the state of California. Five NARC wins, five 360 wins. He finished second at Placerville with High Limit just on Saturday. And uh, I think Sanders, this could be the one where he gets that first national win out of the way. And, you know, these prelim nights, they don't really count, I feel like, towards that national win. It's only half the field. Uh, but Saturday, I really do think that he is one of the top three guys uh, when it comes to potentially winning this race. And would it be a big one uh, for $100,000 to win? So Sanders has got to be at the top of your list if you are, uh, you know, if you know anything about sprint car racing, Sanders has got to be at the top of the list, right? Uh, Colby Copeland going to make his first high limit racing appearance. He was 15th in 2014. Uh, the one-third portion of SLC Promotions, uh, Colby Copeland, he's always strong uh, at Silver Dollar Speedway, a very underrated driver with a lot of racecraft, and I think he could be a guy that could sneak into the top 10 for sure on his prelim night, and I think he's going to be a part of the feature on Saturday as well. He's driving the Van Lair Steering Repair 5V. Corey Eliason, third place run at the Gold Cup in 2018. That was the last time he ran the Gold Cup. That was in the Roth Enterprises 83 car. And Corey has been very, very good on this West Coast swing. If it wasn't for getting him, him getting taken out uh, at Tulare, he could be looking at you know three top 10 finishes, I believe, uh, on this West Coast swing. He's already been quick time in his flight two times this, uh, this West Coast swing. It was quick time at Placerville and quick time at Kings. And uh, this has been a very good swing for Corey Eliason. I think it continues at Silver Dollar Speedway. Casey Kane, he was fifth in 2021. Another guy that's had some really good runs, has not needed a provisional for any of the races so far. I want to say he was 15th, 10th, and 6th in the three races so far here on the West Coast Swing. Uh, Caleb Henry, if that car can run, uh, he is a guy that I would like to see uh, get up there and run up front. He's led laps during the Gold Cup week before. His best run was a 12th place finish in 2022 at this race. And if they can get the car running right, I think Caleb Henry is a guy that you should watch for. 
Jamie Veal, I did not realize that he has a top five finish in the Gold Cup in the past, a fourth place finish in 2017, and uh, he has a top 10 finish on the West Coast Swing so far. I believe that came at the Kings Speedway in Hanford. Uh, Brent Marks makes his first return to Silver Dollar Speedway since 2019, where he finished 10th in the main event. He will be joining me in the announcer's booth tomorrow night uh, for the Thursday night portion of the Gold Cup. Uh, but Brent Marks is trying to get this West Coast swing turned around. Uh, it's been a little bit of a rough uh, go for him here, and we'll see if he can get things going at Silver Dollar Speedway. Then we come to Rico Abreu, two-time Gold Cup Race of Champions winner, 2016 and 2018. He's another guy that's got to be at the top of the list when it comes to contenders to win this thing. And uh, if Rico can get the win, it would be the, the biggest, highest-paying win of his career. And so we'll see what he can do. James McFadden, probably the hottest driver with High Limit right now. He's got three top five finishes on this West Coast swing. His best run at the Gold Cup was second in 2021. He's got finishes of first, fourth, and fifth the first three nights. And so McFadden, he's another guy. I feel like I keep saying that, right? I told you Friday was tougher, and I keep saying, well, that's got to be a guy at the top of your list, right? Got to have McFadden on there. Uh, Tanner Thorson uh, has finished second against the Outlaws at Silver Dollar Speedway before. That was not during the Gold Cup week. His best run at the Gold Cup, a 25th place run in 2018, got into an incident there. That was the last time he's ever ran the Gold Cup. And so I think Thorson's going to definitely improve that number this weekend. DJ Neto, who has been probably the best driver at Silver Dollar Speedway this year, two uh, local 410 wins this season, and a couple of good runs with NARC as well. His best run at the Gold Cup, 10th in 2016. And then we got two more guys down here with Chase Randall going to be driving the Tyner Hurst Racing 94 car. He was ninth here last year at the Gold Cup, driving the uh, Works Limited 57W. And so Randall, I think, is going to be interesting to watch. Uh, that car that he's driving uh, was just recently a winner at Silver Dollar Speedway last year in 360 competition with Landon Brooks behind the wheel. We know the car is good. We know the driver is good. But can they mesh well very quickly because they're not going to have much time to figure it out. Chase Randall, ninth last year. We'll see what he can do. And then Dominic Sells, he rounds out the drivers that have made the feature before. He was fourth last year at this race, including a podium run on his prelim night. And so Dominic Selzy had been a little bit off the pace, I would say, uh, for under, you know, for his standards over the first three races on the West Coast Swing. But Silver Dollar Speedway, one of his best tracks, I would say. And uh, he is going to definitely be a guy to watch for as well. Now, drivers that do have prelim night starts but have never made the Gold Cup feature, including Chance Grasty. You've got the uh, zero 2 of Ashton Torgerson, who did make a show with High Limit at Placerville. Uh, Jay Steinberg in car number 2S. you got Michael Ling out there in the 21M. And Jesse Schlotfeld is going to be a welcome addition to the field. He did make a prelim night, I want to say in 2023, in the number 21S car. Schlotfeld, a young driver from up there in the state of Washington. And a uh, fun name to say. And uh, number two, he's he's on the gas at all at all times. So Jesse Schlotfeld, great to see him uh, get entered into the event here late in the going. Now, the long list of drivers that have either never been to the Gold Cup Race of Champions or Silver Dollar Speedway for that matter, or they've just never made a prelim night feature. Uh, starting off with Jock Goodyear, this could be a track that I think uh, you know is good for Jock Goodyear. He uh, had a top 10 or was running top 10 at Kings, uh, You know, got into a wreck late in that race, won a heat race there. So him and uh, Paul Silva have definitely meshed pretty well early on. You know, Placerville is a different animal, and he was struggling there. But I think Jock Goodyear is going to be just fine at Silver Dollar. You got Jennifer Osborne out there. She'll be driving car number 76. Uh, Brenham Crouch in car number one, making his Silver Dollar Speedway debut. You've got R.C. Smith, a guy that's been around for a long time. Not really much results to show at Silver Dollar. Does not race very often at all. Uh, he'll be driving car number 5S, I believe. Uh, then Tyler Courtney only ran one time at Silver Dollar Speedway. That was during California Sprint, with, Sprint Week with the USAC CRA Series. That was back in 2017. He ran seventh in that main event. And uh, Sunshine obviously had an up and down um, West Coast swing so far. I want to say he was top five at Tulare. He won at Kings and then needed a provisional and ran like 19th at Placerville. And then he was running a go-kart last night, got upside down. So uh, Sunshine been all over the map here recently. Uh, we'll see how he takes to the Silver Dollar Speedway with the wing on top of the race car. Uh, obviously, we know the, the car and driver are good, uh, but how quickly can he adapt? Uh, Dominic Gordon and Dustin Freitas. Uh, Gordon has been a real letdown so far. A lot of people had him tabbed to be a guy that could break out onto the national scene here during this West Coast swing. It has not happened yet. He's been in the C-Main every single night. Uh, but we'll see what Dominic Gordon can do. 
uh, in that number 10 car. Jarrett Sorries in the 12. You're going to have Michael Sellers in the 15S. He had motor issues at Placerville. Uh, Tyler Thompson is another guy to watch for in this race. He's driving the main motorsports 35 km. He has been lights out in 360s this year and had some, I mean, just superb runs in the 410 as well. Uh, Tyler Thompson, a name that people probably don't know, uh, but I believe by the time we get through Chico, we get through Douglas County, Elma, and uh, Skagit, you're going to know the name Tyler Thompson. This kid is very, very good. Uh, Drake Stanley, he's going to run a 360 engine as well as Carson Hamas and Bobby Butler, all three of those with 360s under the hood. And then old Brian Boswell going to make an appearance as well in the 75. So let me grab a pen here. I'm going to mark down who I think the top five guys are uh, for the Friday night prelim, which is much, much tougher than trying to figure out the five guys that are running on Thursday. So we'll start things off with Justin Sanders, right? Sanders has got to be the number one guy on this list for sure. Number two, in my opinion, as of right now, it's going to be James McFadden due to that recency bias of being in the top five every single night. Uh, and that team has been very, very good. And then right above him, we got to go with Rico Abreu, two-time Gold Cup race, the champion's winner. He's got two second-place finishes on this West Coast swing. And uh, Abreu, it's one of his best racetracks. Uh, it's a track that, or it's a race that, you know, he's won before. And uh, I, I feel like he's got a lot of confidence right now. So Rico's got to be my third guy. And then looking around here, who should we have as the number four guy? Now remember, I want you guys to tell me your top five from Friday in the comments section below. I, I mean, to be quite honest with you guys, I think I'm going to go with Corey Eliason. I think he's going to be good. Uh, I mean, he's qualified quick time two times on the West Coast swing. He's been fast, and he's pretty good at Silver Dollar. Has a couple of wins to his credit before. Hasn't been to the Gold Cup in like six years. Uh, but, man, I got a good feeling about Corey Eliason. The last time I said that, Justin Peck ran third at the Kings Royal. So, um, Corey Eliason at number four. And you know what? Number five. I mean, does it, I, does it have to be Tyler Courtney, you think? I feel like it kind of has to be, right? I mean, if I don't put Tyler Courtney on the list, I don't know, man. Number five. This is like this is tough, right? I mean, if you watched yesterday's video, I was like, okay, yep, yeah, bam, bam, bam. You know, okay, next video, right? Like, I mean, right, the, the, the Friday night prelim is way, way harder. <sighs> okay, number five. Man, oh, man. You know what? I'm going to go a little off the wall, guys. I'm going with DJ Neto. He was fast all three nights on the West Coast Swing. It literally got in a wreck almost every single night. He's won two races at Silver Dollar this year. I'm going with DJ Neto. That might be the worst pick of all time. There's probably six, seven other guys I could have chose on this list, but those are my five. Let me know your five down in the comment section below. This is the Friday night roster for the 70th Gold Cup Race of Champions. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit subscribe. We are almost at 3,000 subscribers. Hit the like button, and like I said, comment down below. And we'll talk to you again here very soon. I'm going to have another video co uh, coming out later today uh, documenting the move for Hunter Schurenberg and just documenting his last two years because there's a lot to look at there for him. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.